Hello everyone. In this video presentation, we will go over an introduction to script PLCs in the Power PMAC Motion Controller. We will learn how to create and execute them. PLC stands for Programmable Logic Controller. Power PMAC PLCs are software, text-based programs that are similar in functionality to traditional industrial PLCs. In Power PMAC, there are two types of PLC programs, foreground and background. Foreground PLCs scan deterministically at a preset high priority frequency such as servo update. Background PLCs, on the other hand, as suggested by their name, scan freely after higher priority tasks in the leftover CPU processing time. Both foreground and background PLC programs have dedicated numbers and can be composed in either PMAC's own script language or C environment in the IDE software. Note that during a background cycle, PMAC scans all C PLCs simultaneously, then scans the first script PLC, scans all the C PLCs again, then the next script PLC, and so on. A background cycle is only complete when PMAC scans all script PLCs once. This scheme does give C PLCs a significant edge in terms of calculation speed since they are in the same language as the firmware, scan simultaneously and often multiple times within the same background cycle. For simplicity, we will solely focus on background script PLCs in the rest of this presentation. Power PMAC PLCs are extremely flexible due to their open architecture nature, access to any memory register, extensive math, logic operators, and trigonometry libraries. They execute and scan at very high speeds and can be used for a wide array of functions such as monitoring inputs, setting outputs, automating motion and data gathering functions, monitoring variables, general purpose computation, servo motor gain scheduling, and much more. In the ensuing sections, we will learn how to create a new PLC or add an existing one, use logic operators and delay timers, enable and disable PLCs, as well as check their status and enable them on power-up. If you have an existing PLC from a previous solution, it is easy to import it into the current IDE project. Simply right-click on PLC Programs, click Add, Existing Item, and browse to the location of the desired PLC and add it. To create a new PLC, right-click on PLC Programs, click Add, New Item, give the file a name, and add it. For new PLC files, the IDE editor provides a commented out template of a PLC program structure. Feel free to reformat it to your preference and give the PLC a name or valid number of your choosing. If a name is given, the IDE software automatically replaces it with the next available PLC number, 1 through 31, in the order that it is downloaded. Note that the PLC name or number is what really matters. The file name is irrelevant to PMAC. In this first PLC, a global variable called myCounter is inserted with the double plus sign operator that should increment it once every time the PLC is scanned. Let us also insert it in the watch window for continuous monitoring. Loading the PLC into PMAC can be done with the Download All Programs option from either the shortcut in the IDE toolbar or by right-clicking the Project Name menu. Once the project has successfully downloaded, the PLC can be activated from the terminal window with the syntax Enable PLC followed by the PLC name. Caution is generally advised here, especially for beginners or machine integrators developing new PLCs that may contain motor motion or other mechanical functions because the PLC will start scanning immediately after it is enabled. My counter now increments very fast every time Example 1 PLC is scanned in the background. To determine the status of a PLC, query the structure element PLC, square brackets containing the PLC name, dot active. It should be 1 if the PLC is active, 0 if it is not. PLCs keep scanning until they are disabled. This can be done using the syntax Disable PLC followed by the PLC name. Alternately, PLC status can be seen in the Task Manager tool under PLCs. 
This screen provides some statistics about each PLC program, their active status, and start stop buttons which activate and deactivate the chosen PLC. This second PLC example, already downloaded into PMAC, demonstrates the use of a delay timer. Enabling this PLC toggles output 1 on and off every 500 milliseconds. Delay timers are essential to PLC programming for introducing discrete time delays to execute on-off logic but also to wait for certain status bits to take effect or events to occur circumventing the high-speed computation of PLCs. In the project template created by the IDE software, a standard delay timer subroutine resides under libraries in the PMAC script language folder. This delay timer can be used in any PLC at will. In this PLC example, we will use the mathematical operator bit by bit exclusive OR to demonstrate and encourage more efficient programming. This saves execution time and reduces the written code to two lines instead of four for the same result. Additionally, the second unit argument of the delay timer is used this time to showcase the flexibility in PMAC programming. All the mathematical operators available in PMAC are described in detail in the Power PMAC software reference manual. In this PLC example, we will exhibit the use of the simple if and else condition statements. To assist with this demonstration and using one of the many nifty tricks in PMAC, we have created a switch in the watch window simulating an input button toggling between on and off or 1 and 0 every time it is pressed. Now with the PLC enabled, whenever input 1 is 1, my counter will increment. Conversely, when input 1 is 0, my counter is forced to 0. This process is applicable as long as the PLC is active and input 1 can be toggled between 1 and 0 at will. In this PLC example, we will exhibit the use of the simple if and else condition statements. To assist with this demonstration and using one of the many nifty tricks in PMAC, we have created a switch in the watch window simulating an input button toggling between on and off or 1 and 0 every time it is pressed. Now with the PLC enabled, whenever input 1 is 1, my counter will increment. Conversely, when input 1 is 0, my counter is forced to 0. This process is applicable as long as the PLC is active and input 1 can be toggled between 1 and 0 at will. In this PLC example, we introduce a while loop that keeps incrementing my counter until it reaches 1000 which satisfies the condition and exits the loop. The if statement then resets my counter back to zero and that is followed by a one second time delay. This repeats as long as the PLC is active. Of course, there are other ways that may be more efficient to program this function. Here is a sample if you would like to try. In this example, two PLCs are shown in the same file. This is not typically recommended from a project management perspective. However, it does not affect the functionality of neither the IDE nor PMAC. The goal is to demonstrate that PLCs scan in parallel quasi-simultaneously showcasing a part of the multitasking capabilities of PMAC. My counter 7 decrements all the time. My counter 6 increments while input 1 is 1. It is forced to 0 when input 1 is 0. A few final remarks to keep in mind. Foreground PLC0 cannot have a name and should be kept as such. Downloading the project automatically disables any active PLC. PLCs can be enabled on startup using the ppstartup.txt file located in the configuration folder in the Solution Explorer. And lastly, PLCs can be enabled and or disabled from other PLCs, motion programs, subroutines, or C environment. We hope that this, this video has given you a good introduction to creating file. and executing your first Power PMAC script PLC. If you have any questions, please however, feel free to contact your local Omron representative. The, IDE nor PMAC. the goal is to demonstrate that PLCs scan in parallel quasi-simultaneously showcasing a part of the multitasking capabilities of PMAC. My counter 7 decrements all the time. My counter 6 increments while input 1 is 1. It is forced to 0 when input 1 is 0.